Sweat Labs. Get the ultimate shave for your money back. Neon Night Edition, available now. This is News Talk. Now then, you're welcome along. So, a uh, busy show this evening. There is a degree of controversy around the undercard of the Katie Taylor Chantel Cameron fight. Gavin Casey of the 42 is going to join us to explain all. We have Wednesday night rugby after 8 o'clock. Keith Wood and Roy O'Connor on the way. Two live Premier League games this evening Manchester United against Brentford and their conquerors from Sunday, Newcastle, away to West Ham. Tim Vickery also with us on the football show after nine. 53106, the text number. We are at Off The Ball on Twitter. Do get in touch. Michael McCarthy here in the studio. Good evening, Michael. How are you, Joe? Richie McCormick, hello to you. Hello, lads. So uh, we are going to talk to Tim Vickery on the football show about various ongoings. Carlo Ancelotti linked with the Brazilian job, for instance. That, that would, would be, be fun. Yeah. Intriguing, intriguing. And uh, Anthony, the dismal form of Anthony is starting to... Uh, catch people's attention. So uh, Tim Vickery on the way after nine. Keith Wood, who I haven't spoken to in ages. I keep missing Keith Wood. Ships in the night. Right. And he's on with Rory O'Connor. And then first hour, a kind of strange story around the undercard of the Katie Taylor, Chantel Cameron fight. Tickets of which uh, did go quickly, as you might have expected this week. So it seems that Cameron, Chantel Cameron, has uh, defended really the removal of Ellie Scottney from the undercard. The problem being that Ellie Scottney is trained by Shane McGuigan, son of Barry. And there just seems to be an issue between Chantel Cameron, who used to be trained by Shane McGuigan, and uh, McGuigan. And therefore, there's a degree of it's nothing personal with you, Ellie Scottney, who is furious, by the way. Yeah, has, absolutely. Has social media. Yeah. But there is a degree of I'm sorry, it's not about you. And I've signed an NDA, so I can't describe how horribly I was treated, she says. And uh, she has since gone to MTK. And it seems that Scottney and very much her trainer, Shane McGuigan, are off the undercard. So mm. it's, all, uh, slightly it's all very weird. And even like, I mean, um, Cameron's statement is, is sort of strange in a way and where she's kind of like angry at the reaction and look I mean if she's been getting abuse or anything of any kind of course she should be she, but she's angry at basically the anger from the other side but at the same time is kind of saying like you know this is my call it's like I, I didn't know that the headliner got to make the call like she's sort of saying it like it's a matter of fact it's like if I don't want you on the card you're not on the card and it's a strange thing to me that the headliner even especially in it's it's not like they're both world champions and it's a it, it's a unifying fight but it is on Katie's turf so even as the away fighter especially I'm just surprised she has that much pull and they're so open to they're so like they're, they're talking so openly about the fact that like you know I'll decide who's on yeah. my fights you know uh, it may well be all much ado about nothing but uh, we'll talk about the fight a little bit anyway with Gav Casey so that's this hour has Mick started saving for next season's European adventure yet says Jason the Ooh. Irish Aston Villa fan we've no time to get into that I'm sorry Ushin <laughs> in Mayo that this is be, terrible that could I'm, being, I'm, I'm being completely kind of uh, <laughs> uh, not you Aston Villa well that's nothing new there uh, Ushin the, so the thing going around with Villa last night by the way quickly was uh, very quickly uh, the, sorry sorry go on the thing going around with Villa now is that Villa are uh, three points off third place right and or really? no sorry no six points off third place right there we go and uh, no so. but but they're uh, the, the whole thing is like uh, Villa six points of third place or as Sky Sports would call it 18 points clear of safety yeah. <laughs> it's like pretty the good. bottom of the table starts at, it starts wherever Villa are so now it's starting at seventh that's pretty good yeah. uh, Ushin in Mayo uh, makes the obvious but all important <laughs> statement it's Masters Eve which it surely is oh yeah it surely I is. saw the dinner picture what a what a crew Joe <laughs> with their green jackets my god that is a that is a big 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 pile of conservative <laughs> Men <laughs> needs an injection of youth. That grouping doesn't. It? Well, it's okay that the former winners are old, I suppose. No, but. I wouldn't hold that against them. <laughs> we have been recording Golf Weekly episodes to beat the band. So yep. uh, this afternoon it was Gary Murphy, and Gary Murphy's an interesting perspective on the whole thing because he went to college in Augusta. Okay, uh, so he knows the town very well. Uh, he got to play the course once, and uh, when he was nineteen on a scholarship and he was telling us about the experience and it was super interesting and we were you know did you go in, did, in 
led into the clubhouse afterwards and he was saying, yeah, yeah, we got to have lunch in there afterwards. There were about seven or eight of the, the team, the golf team. And, uh, you know, there you, know, you go in and there's George Bush Sr. We chatted to him for a while. <laughs> you know, it's this kind of a, <laughs> a Sang peak, around, like, peak behind the curtain. Choose, like, yeah. Taller than you'd expect, said Gary. George Murphy. Bush. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's all waiting I, for you. Augustus is a strange one. Like, it's funny you say, like, he'd know the town pretty well. Like, Gavin Cooney is over there, obviously, as you, uh, you know, <laughs> found out lamentably on the show uh, when he was on <laughs> with us. But he's over there for the 42 all week and he's been putting up kind of pictures here and there. And one of them was just like a Hooters on the side of the road. You know, like you'd see in any kind of like suburban road, in a, you know, main road in America, these kind of like, you know, road stop kind of like ho- joints, as they'd call them over there. It was like a Hooters. And I was like, that doesn't feel very Augusty. And it's like, of course, of course, this place is more than the Masters and Augusta National, but, you know, certainly well, not in my brain. The town is obviously famously average and it's very much a case of... See, not famously, it would never have, I would no. never, well, I mean, to me anyway, like Augusta would never register with me anything other than like uh, the, the Masters. So you just think of it as oh, the no, golf it's... course. And then every now and then you see it popping up on like, you know, uh, John King's Magic Wall or whatever during the... American elections. Oh, well, the word even used by Gary today was dilapidated. Right. Like very poor and very much along racial lines as well. You know, it's it's a symbol of capitalist, right. racist issues uh, facing America in all kinds of uh, ways. So it's a real case of the haves and the have-nots in that town. But he had loads of interesting uh, tidbits I hadn't realised. So, for instance, I was asking if there's a sense of resentment in the town. Yeah, you know, they've got this thing and then this very average town and he was saying no not at all it's like it's a massive celebration there's a great sense of pride in it it coincides with spring ba- break so there's a party atmosphere and um, you'll remember there was Eisenhower's tree at Augusta because uh, President Eisenhower was uh, like a member loved it had a desk in the clubhouse he was there so often uh, he passed a law which still stands that uh, you can rent out your house during the tournament tax-free. So okay. the residents of Augusta can rent out their houses to patrons. And if it's an especially nice house, some of the players and make five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 and not have to pay tax on it, courtesy of President Eisenhower. So there's there all go. sorts of stuff going on. It's always tax breaks in America, isn't it? It's like Ah, uh, listen. There you go, Richie. Do for someone. Can't bring you more than that, Rich. Come on. That's interesting. Yeah, that that's... It, it's... George is a funny one, actually, when you consider how conservative it would lean. And yet it has this university college culture like Athens will be famous for the, the birthplace of the B-52s and OREM and all that kind of thing. Um, it's a it's an odd, there can be odd pockets to it here mm. and there. But yeah, as Mick pointed out, I think when we were having that debate last night about uh, whether or not you'd rather be a member of uh, Wimbledon or uh, Augusta. I think when you see photos like that one from the dinner and how much of a sausage fest it is there, you probably would like to have more of a mixed environment, I'd say, just for sheer normality's sake more than anything else. I think I think it was cheeseburgers last night, wasn't it? And Texas steak. So Yeah. Yeah. The Not news sausages. round is brought to you. Which little abs get the ultimate shave or your money back. Neon Night Edition is available now. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> just as I read that Arthur p- posted a tweet from David Ornstein through oh yeah the Atletico it's happening baby Frank, it's happening Chelsea it's Chelsea are close yeah. to appointing <laughs> Frank Lampard as head coach on an interim basis until the end of the season give it Frank yeah. end of season saw him there last night and said it to Arthur I would say joking, jokingly that, you know, is there a chance that Frank gets this job again? It's a great chance. And he was sitting there on his own in that sort of, like, position that you're put in by the club, it did seem. You know, to be yeah. found by the cameras. Club legend, though. Yeah, I know. He was very much on his own. Uh, watching intently as well, you know, sternly. I don't know, Frank, Frank take this job to the end of the season, interim, win the Champions League, mm-hmm. and he's back. God, like a Di Matteo. Yeah, he'll stay on, though. It does really Do you know what, though? add to the sense that he is um, finished. No, I, I was going to say that like, <laughs> he, 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 he has been given very, chances very, that very he lucky. continually given chances he doesn't deserve. Yeah. 
he's falling. He's like, it's like he's being insulated from f- like slipping too far down the ladder. Yeah, which is just it's it's weird. Uh, but like <clears throat> Oliver Kay, the the football journalist, tweeted there. Like a lot of people are obviously seeing this for the banter aspects of Frank Lampard falling upwards and getting a gig he's previously held. <clears throat> but he's pointed out that it's actually one of the more sensible things that Chelsea could do, whereby they appoint somebody while they're scrambling around to figure out what they actually are doing. They get somebody who's been in there before and can steady the ship and knows it's a short term deal and has an understanding of what's going on. And they get their bearings, bring in someone like Luis Enrique or whoever they want to bring in as regards a big name in the summer or maybe even before that and move on from there. So it might not be as much of a lunatic move as a lot of us might, you know, initially look at and go, oh, yeah, that's insane. Um, but yeah, it's the, it's the fact that he's insulated from falling too far down the ladder is very strange. Mm. Very, very strange. What did Frank Lampard blame for his failure at Chelsea the last time? Uh, the transfer ban? Transfer embargo, yeah. What have Chelsea done since? <laughs> <laughs> You have enough players now, Frank. Come on. Right, Frank, right. Pretend you've bought, like, I mean, you've got 600 players to choose from. Mm. Just go pick a squad out of that and go and get us into Europe, maybe, or win the Champions League. I, now that I think about it more, I would have said the defining aspect of Frank Lampard's tenure at Chelsea, transfer ban aside, and Tammy and the boys having, you know, some good times. And to be fair, he brought through Mason mm-hmm. Mount. But the defining aspect of Lampard was it looked like the squad made no sense. I, like, it looked like a mishmash. Kante, oh, like now. <laughs> Kante, Kante was playing on the wing at one stage. Mm. Like it, was, it was just Kante like... And Jor- Jorginho over. Yeah, yeah, and you were listening to people saying, oh, well, Frank, it's good. Like, he didn't buy the German. Uh, well, that was Harry Redknapp said that. But, you know, that sense of the squad is all over the shop and nobody could make sense of this. Thomas Tuchel made sense of it in about a half hour over a cup of tea. Like, he yeah. got out the back of a, a cigarette packet and, like, yeah, that'll work. Go to three at the back. Boom, done. Win the Champions League. What the hell's Frank going to do with this situation? Oh. If he couldn't unravel the previous, uh, you know, five minutes of Tuchel's time mess, how I, is he going to sort this out? I dare say he'll probably do a better job than Potter was doing at the end, which was a back tree of um, of Rhys James, uh, Koulibaly and Cucurella, yeah. which played against Villa last week. That was the back, that was the I think central Potter, defenders. Potter got a bit scrambled was, as managers. Yeah. That, was two, that was two thirds of their back three last night, to be fair. It was only Fafana was, was at the right-hand side of defence. Yeah, makes a little more sense. Yeah, yeah, Rhys James is pushed forward. Can't have Rhys James. But, um, <laughs> but like it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a mess of a club. Um, he's also like walking, it, sorry, he's walking back into a club that have made 400,000 signings since he left, but still are stuck with Kai Havertz as their only striker. Yeah. Well, it's TBC, so that's uh, the latest uh, reporting from the Athletic there is Chelsea are close to giving it to Frank. I really hope so. Till the end of the season. Uh, what Richie, are the negotiations sorry. like there, by the way? What are the, like, did like Frank, uh, we'd like to maybe, yes, is like put, uh, ask you about coming in as, yeah, no, absolutely, coming in as interim manager. Like, th- th- that can't take long, that conversation. I'd say it's just like Frank's like, let's call it an even three mil grant done, go. <laughs> Uh, so Football Premier League dis- Premier, Premier League dis- we're talking about people in like you know such like false lives so far tonight between Augusta <laughs> and uh, Frank Lampard just taking his casual 3 mil off Chelsea well, I don't know if it's actually 3 mil I know but you know <laughs> it's probably more than that <laughs> Potter was getting 10 a year there you go Rogers was getting 10 a year and, apparently at Leicester so yeah and they need him they Je- need Frank oh do they so they Frank will somebody. say and his agent. You came to me, mate. Yeah, OK. So let's start with the football this evening, Richie. <laughs> it includes Manchester United after uh, genuinely an abysmal showing at the weekend. Yeah. And they haven't been great in their last two Premier League games before that either, which included, of course, that 7-1 in Anfield. But they're looking to get their hunt for a top four place back on track tonight. Uh, they're without a win in their last three. The entertain side who thrashed them 4-0 Back in August, that is Brentford. Uh, United uh, must have been listening to us the other night because they have indeed dropped out Veghorst tonight. Jaden Sancho comes into the starting eleven for them. David Hayes in goal. A back four of Diogo Dalot, uh, Rafael Varane, Lissandra Martinez and Luke Shaw. The free scoring Scott McTominay is in midfield alongside Marcel Sabitzer. Jaden Sancho, Shans- Sancho, even Bruno Fernandes and Anthony are in behind Marcus Rashford. Uh, for Brentford, one change for them. It's at right full. David Raya is in goal. In comes uh, Mads Riversland on the right-hand side of defence. Pontus Janssen, Ben Mee, Ethan Pinnock and Rico Henry make up the rest of their back five. It's an all-Danish midfield of Christian Norgaard, Mikkel Damsgaard and Matthias Janssen with Ivan Tony and Brian Mbwemo up front. Newcastle are looking to build on Sunday's win.
win over Manchester United. They go to West Ham. Uh, the Hammers make one change with Mikel Antonio coming in for Danny Ings and Newcastle lining up pretty much as expected. Still that front three of Alan Samaxima, Jacob Murphy and Callum Wilson. Bruno Gamarish is in midfield. Both of those games kick off at eight. Imagine Chelsea players' reaction when Lampard comes back in. We know what they said about Potter, says Anonymous. Uh, There's still the yeah. fact, though, that Frank Lampard was Chelsea legend, Premier League legend. You know, it, it does still stand to him somewhat. Somewhat, yeah. And just in terms, they're not going to be just making jokes about him, you know, I don't think anyway. Or Googling him. <laughs> Certainly not, no. On um, me describing Augusta the town as famously average, somebody asks, where is Ireland's Augusta? Don't answer that. <laughs> For your <laughs> Thanks. Sake. You're protecting me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Killian and Dublin makes the uh, more important point <laughs> Feck it lads I'm all aboard the Evan not Ferguson a bad answer. hype train what did he say? Thurless I don't think I've ever been to Thurless it's got a cathedral of, of sport in it and then it's otherwise Thurless it's doing? otherwise Thurless stop 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 <laughs> don't lads come on now uh, Feck it lads I'm all above the Evan Ferguson hype train this is Killian Dublin I mean we all? there's no room left for you mate <laughs> uh, <laughs> we've departed the station long ago that was well to the point that Richard Keyes on B in oh, Sports last night, B in Sports, Richard Keyes was telling Andy Gray, Chelsea need to sign Evan Ferguson. <laughs> Chelsea. Well, they need a striker. Chelsea can't sign everyone. He's, his logic was... Oh, I hope to God he doesn't go to Chelsea. Oh, I just, that's not, that is... Uh, can we get the audio actually, Arthur? Keyes, he was effusive. After me saying to Dan O'Donnell <laughs> last night, I'm not sure, like, outside of Ireland, there's that much hype about Ferguson. You know, it's not like Michael Owens arrived on the scene in the eyes of the English uh, media. And then, yeah. lo and behold, I saw Keezy saying, there aren't many number nines in the world anymore. <laughs> yeah. the, the boy can score goals. A Keezy is always the man to prove your point, I suppose, John. I love, I love the way BN stuff is always, like, 70% of Keezy telling the panel stuff. Yeah, I love <laughs> It's not him asking the I opinion. Joe him surprisingly that. loves that. I yeah. also love that. Uh... <laughs> Andy, but interesting. It doesn't pro- disprove Dan though, because I mean, there's nothing like a back heel to get people talking about something they don't know anything True. about. Either, but also, you know? Andy Gray, I thought was more uh, representing now I, what I would see as the general sense on Ferguson. Gray said, "Yeah, the kid's got a chance." Yeah, that's. It wasn't like this guy's something special. It was the kid's got a chance. Yeah, I think Dan made a good point last night though. In that you know we are we are a little bit more used to kind of like the uh, the prodigies coming true now. It isn't sort of one-offs. You know, like when Robbie Fowler did it, that was sort of, he was the only one. You know, whereas now I think I think we're getting 18-year-olds every season. And mo- like it's, it's not to say they won't make it, it's just, again, there isn't that sort of like, this could be the new Jimmy Greaves every time, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, look, Keezy... And well, Keezy knows his football. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Being. And if, if if you don't think he knows his football, you just ask him. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I thought he was effusive. Uh, Jason McAteer was in the panel as well. He didn't voice an opinion. It was. <laughs> they probably don't know that Evan Ferguson's Irish, let's face it. Or they probably uh, don't no. remember that Jason McAteer's Irish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they do. Like, they've done about a million. Tell us about Brian Kerr. Uh, do you think McAteer. they remember anything they've done? Keys and Grey? Yeah. What do you mean? Oh, they'll do that and then they're like, that's it, right? What's well, on tomorrow's running order? Uh, I don't know. Come they're on. forward looking folks, you know? Come on now. Um, so. Jeez, he's got a memory like an elephant, Mick, as we all know. Liverpool are taking on UEFA legally. Yeah, lawyers acting on behalf of Liverpool supporters caught up in the chaos at last season's Champions League final have formally filed almost 900 claims against UEFA. An independent review concluded in February that the governing body bore primary responsibility for what almost led to what was called a mass fatality catastrophe at the showpiece game in Paris last May. Fans found themselves penned against stadium perimeter fences when they were tear-gassed by French police. The firm involved is bringing the claim on the basis that UEFA failed to ensure a safe and secure environment. Okay, we have. Uh, well, we men- I know Lampard is next on your list. We've mentioned that situation. Yeah. Uh, cricket then. Yeah, Ireland need a dramatic turnaround tomorrow morning if they're to make a Bangladesh side bat again in their f- test in Mirpur. Bangladesh bowlers Shakib Al Hassan and Tajal Islam both took a pair of wickets as they reduced the tourists for 27 for four in their second innings before stumps today. Ireland will resume 128 runs shy of Bangladesh's first innings total of 369. I never doubt Arthur O'Dea. He's managed to get the Keys audio in record time. So pretty good, pretty impressive. Be in sports from last night, please. 
But he listen, is. you know, well, you know, in the modern game, if, if, if Lukaku doesn't want to come back to Chelsea, he's not coming back to no, Chelsea. No, I, I get of. that. But what, what I'm saying is, everybody's looking for a centre forward. Yes, they are. They are. They, they are in f few and far between. Evan Ferguson. Well, that's what I'm saying. If you see a, if you see a little nugget like that, mm. go and get him. I think. I, but see, they I, might think Brojas is a little nugget. They might think he's he's got a chance. We don't know yet. Well, and say it's bit... little Ferguson's not little, but no, he's, not little, he's a but... centre forward with touch. Mm. He, 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 he scores goals. Yeah. Uh, he leads the line. Mm. He's a proper nine. He's got pace, power, accuracy. <laughs> 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 Yeah, there you go. Oh, making yeah. waves, Evan. Well, it was it was uh, so. Was it great at mentioning him first, or had he already been talked about? Oh, I got the impression there it had been. There was mid conversation. Yeah. I, yeah, it yeah. was almost like I think Lukaku might have been a slight tangent, and they were going gotcha. back to Ferguson. I think um, <laughs> one of the more charming things on Twitter over the last twenty four hours, and let's be honest, there isn't much competition, uh, but have been videos of Evan Ferguson from age about seven up scoring the exact same goal. Like oh yeah, numerous teams. Dan so. showed me one last night in the under seventeens. Uh, it was it was during COVID. Yeah, it was yeah. a final yeah. anyway. In That's the all 17s, news. Yeah, have you seen the one he scored this when he was twelve? Right. Okay. Same exact goal again. I think it was like Pretty the much, yeah. uh, DDSL representative team against Everton. Right. On some kind of Astro pitch. I wonder was it out on, mm. at the AUL complex? But regardless, it was exactly the same goal as a twelve-year-old. Yeah. And then he did it for Bowes at seventeen. Do you know? Also, I was saying to Dan last night. So. It's been described as an instinctive finish, which it really was, because it was a, you know, a weighing up the circumstances, ball here, I'm at this spot, that's the angle, that's the best thing to do, did it. But I would have said he, he instinctively weighed it up so quickly, he was also very considered and relaxed and knew what he was doing really early. Yeah. And then he doesn't lose his mind when he scores. No, he definitely doesn't. He trots away as if to say, yeah, yeah. I score just doing my job. Twenty minutes into this game, here we're one 0 up. Yeah, score Premier League goals. It's just what I do. It is very exciting, though. I mean, we've been crying. Out for what this what for has a he got? Time. Is it is it seven or eight goals now he scored? Like since like four, New Year's Eve or something like yeah, that. You know what I mean? Like four in the Premier League. Yeah. It's four in the yeah. Premier League, and he scored he scored a couple of cup goals as well. I I think he might have seven, and that's like. I think was did he score on New Year's Eve? So I see somebody saying it was from New Year's Eve. Like it's it's. It's not just kind of like a good first season. He's doing it all, you know, in this chunk of time, like since he got into the team. Mm. He's actually been quite prolific. It's remarkable, really, yeah, like, yeah. you know. It's so exciting. Um, don't use the expression boy to describe 21-year-old footballers. It drives me mad. Everybody's a boy in professional football, even when they're in their 30s. Absolute nonsense, says Joel in Kildare. What See, if they've got a babyish face? Yeah, he's also 18. Ruddy-cheeked. I don't think there's anything wrong with Did that. Did we call him boy? I, maybe Keys and Gray? I don't know. Um, maybe it was us. I wouldn't really refer to anyone as the boy. The boy. The boy's done well. It's a bit Harry Potterish. The boy's got a chance, I think, is what you said. Question. Ollie in Dublin. And I would love, listeners, if you could give me a quick add off the ball or 5 3 one, six answer. Ollie in Dublin. Thurless. It's the final group this Sunday. Rory McElroy, Shane Larry are in it. They're tied. One, who's winning? Two, who do you guys want to win? Well, I'm going to answer. I want Lowry to win because I feel like Rory will have chances for like yeah. the next 10 years. It's very diplomatic. With Shane, it might not always, uh, you know, the winning the Masters might not like be one of those things that... What uh, if they were about to both retire for <laughs> unforeseen reasons? Oh, then. Grand Slam. No European has ever done it, let alone yeah. Irishman. And Can yeah. you name everyone who's done it, Joe? Oh. Well, Woods Nicholas... Hogan, Sarazen. Oh, uh, there's one more, and I know it. Is it Byron Nelson? No. Well, unless there's another one again. No, no, no it's only five. Oh, Gary Player. Gary Player, there you go. Did you see Gary Player's interview last week? No. In the Times? <laughs> What's he Did said you? now? I oh saw him God. on an old Curb Your Enthusiasm episode the other day. Though. I'll get you the exact quotes. Suffice to say, a huge fan of Donald Trump. <laughs> but that, again, Shock. you keep saying these things. Like, you see, you're so, you're so, you love golf so much. But, just but every now and then you say these things like they're massive reveals. Like nobody is surprised by that. I know, but it was just. It, so I do mean, you remember it, Bernard it, Langer was arguing with people in the queue to vote? Like it didn't really happen. It was just one of those Trump stories. But see, I forgot that <laughs> Trump gave him the Medal of Freedom as well. So they are tight. Yeah. Remember, this was right after January sixth. Annika Sorenstam and Gary Player turned up like the next day to get the Medal of Freedom. <laughs> uh, it is the worst sport, isn't it? <laughs> Joe's having an existential crisis here, Richie. <laughs> it's the 
most right, the day highly, before the Masters, <laughs> the worst time for him to have it. The most beautiful of sports, hijacked, hijacked <laughs> by the people who play it. Yeah. Do you want to give us the last story or two, Rich? <laughs> Uh, Alexander Cheferin has been re-elected unopposed as UEFA president. The Slovenian will serve a third four-year term. Munster confirmed today that Dan Goggin is leaving the province at the end of this season. The centre has made 81 appearances for them, scoring 10 tries. However, the 28-year-old has made just five starts this season. Munster say Goggin is leaving to play abroad and it's believed that he's bound for Australia. Ulster's busy week of contract extensions continues at pace. Hooker John Andrew, prop Callum Reid and versatile back Aaron Sexton have all signed fresh two-year deals. Okay. English rugby have uh, conducted an investigation. Yeah, and it's claimed racism has been experienced by players at all levels of elite rugby in England. A survey by the sports governing bodies found there was a culture of stereotyping in the men's, women's, national club and academy teams. The RFU, Premiership Rugby and Rugby Players Association there have published an inclusion and diversity plan to address those issues. And uh, one last one. We'll keep an eye on this this evening. Ken Doherty trying to get into the World Championships. Yeah, a couple of hurdles still to jump. He's resuming 5-3 up on women's world number two, Rianne Evans, in their World Championship qualifier this evening. The first to 10 will play Hamad Maya in the next round. Fergal O'Brien ended this morning's session with a 6-3 lead over Liam Davies, while the seven-time former champion Stephen Hendry trails his ex-wife's nephew, James Cal by seven frames to two. Wow. Sucre's <laughs> a small world, isn't it? Um... I, I I think we should do a piece of this someday. I think there's something incredible about these kind of like greats of the game in this sort of like uh, pit of the World Championship qualifying that we hear every year. You know, like I'm surprised Richie didn't read out Steve Davis and John Parrott's score there, you know, as well, or Jimmy White or something like that. It's a, it's a, it's a, such an interesting aspect of snooker mm. that people, one, last for so long and then two, just try to get back to that and are just in with kind of every Tom, Dick and Harry who's a pro yeah. Um, before they get to the big stage, you know. What age is Ken Doherty now? He is 53. It's hard to tell with the Ken because he refuses to age. Looks like a boy. Yeah. The boy Doherty goes this evening in the, in the <laughs> qualifiers. See, uh, there you go. There you go. Uh, we're out of time. Richie, thank you very much. Nice and lads. Michael, thank you. Cheers. Your chance to win big. News Talk's Cash Machine. Okay, so our rollover uh, is moving along. If you've entered since 5 o'clock Friday, you're still in to win, but you must know the new number, which is 4040,323 euro and 26 cents. Text play to 57557. Get your entry in by three o'clock tomorrow and then across the Go Loud network of stations. Barry Dunn will make the call. If your phone rings, answer within five rings. The exact amount in euro 